I've been considering one or two paragraphs in Prince Harry's witness statement to the High Court just recently, and I'm coming to the view that it explains the why in why did he write the book Spare. And in fact, I came to that view on a video over on my personal thoughts on my Black Belt Secrets channel, which is linked in the description below. And I just felt that because, as I've discussed in previous videos, the witness statement is not the live evidence. The full extent of this witness statement is, is not going to be reported fully. So I thought that some bits of it, and this bit in particular, to begin with at least, was worth bringing up so that you can think about it and perhaps get a greater clarity on this trial as it unfolds. But it just goes to show that when you come out of the legal analysis and you put some personal thoughts into this, it can actually give you some real insight. Take a look at what I said in that video. The bits of it in the Netflix uh, documentary, docu-series that he's done. Again, I haven't watched every bit of it, but I've watched enough to get a gist of certain areas of what he's said. And those bits that I've watched and read, I've commented on. Now, in many of my videos, I've made comment sometimes making it quite clear what I think, but without being outright insulting about it, I would like to think that someone shouldn't be uh, writing books to comment on their whole family's uh, private life and private moments for monetary gain. I've made that clear, but that's not Harry the person, that's Harry the behavior, that's what he's doing. And I've also said, again, this is what I'm doing. I'm giving you counter arguments. I'll give you a thought and I'll give you a counter argument. The counter argument might be that he might well be so fed up with news corporations chasing him around so very often that eventually he's just thought, well, screw it. I'll put it all in a book and you can have it all, all at once. Only this time I'll make my money off it. That's probably possible, quite possibly what he's thought. Now, if that's what he's thought, that's his behavior. Yes, it reflects on his character, but that's not necessarily all of who he is. So I can't comment I like or dislike him as a person because this is just what he's done. So with that in mind, I'm going to share with you two paragraphs from Prince Harry's witness statement, which I believe supports the view that I've come to reach. Paragraph 10 reads as follows. Prince Harry says, in my experience as a member of the royal family, each of us gets cast into a specific role by the tabloid press. You start off as a blank canvas while they work out what kind of person you are and what kind of problems and temptations you might have. They then start to edge you towards playing the role or roles that suit them based on which sells as many papers as possible, especially if you are the spare to the heir. You're then either the playboy prince, the failure, the dropout, or in my case, the thicko, the cheat, the underage drinker, the irresponsible drug taker. The list goes on. As a teenager and in my early 20s, I ended up feeling as though I was playing up to a lot of the headlines and stereotypes that they wanted to pin on me, mainly because I thought that if they are printing this rubbish about me and people were believing it, I might as well do the crime so to speak. So just pausing there for a moment, I will go on to the rest of it, but pausing there for a moment, that really backs up what I said in my other video. Prince Harry must feel that if everyone is believing this rubbish, as he put it, about him, then he may as well do the crime, as he said. He might as well do it. So if, pol if people believed that he was an irresponsible drug taker, then he may as well do that. At least that's what this paragraph suggests. And if people believed that he was an under, underage drinker, then he may as well do that. And whatever the things that they believe and that was being printed about him that people believed, he may as well do those as well. So coming back to the book Spare, I now sort of follow that logic on and think that Harry must feel that if every aspect of his life was covered by the tabloid press, if every detail, if every private moment, every private thought, every private detail, every argument, every internal argument between him and the royal family, anything that they could get their hands on 
if he believed that all of that was to be printed and digested, dissected, analysed and disseminated worldwide, then he's obviously, in my view, from, from paragraph 10 of his witness statement, where he says he may as well do the crime, in my view, that explains the book. That tells me that he very likely thought, well, if the whole world is going to read about every private detail that they can get their hands on, and if they want to print and publish and discuss and disseminate every private detail they can get their hands on about me, then why not put it all in a book and say, OK, there you go, you can have it all, only this time I'm going to make money out of it. Now, I'm not saying that I agree or disagree with the publication of the book. My view on that doesn't really matter. You may agree or disagree with the logic that I've just given you, and you may agree or disagree with the publication of the book. One way or another, there is a logic there. Because, again, speaking as an advocate, giving you this way of thinking, even if you thought that the publication of the book was wrong, and many of you do, I would suggest that you can at least see the logic in that if all of these details would be printed, if the press get their hands on those details, they would print it and sell newspapers and make money from it. Then it is a natural and logical conclusion that he would simply think, well, let's just write a book. Let's put it all in the book. So that was, for me, that was a very telling part of this witness statement. But coming back to finish off the paragraph, he goes on to say it was a downward spiral whereby the tabloids would constantly try and coax me, a damaged young man, into doing something stupid that would make a good story and sell lots of newspapers. Looking back on it now, such behaviour on their part is utterly vile. Paragraph 11, he says, whilst they would, of course, report on my successes in life, it seemed to me that they took far greater pleasure in knocking me down time and time again. This extended to my relationships. I always felt as if the tabloids wanted me to be single, as I was much more interesting to them and sold more newspapers. Whenever I got into a relationship, they were very keen to report the details, but would then very quickly seek to try to break it up by putting as much strain on it and creating as much distrust as humanly possible. As I shall go into much more detail later in this statement. This twisted objective is still pursued to this day, even though I'm now married. So as I said at the outset of this video, I feel like there is a legal analysis to this statement. And whilst there may be in some areas a lack of evidence, there is ultimately, I mean, this is evidence. This is Harry's evidence. This is his personal account. And as some others have observed just recently, evidence from an individual is still evidence. It may not be evidence in, in the sense that other people think of as hard proof and CCTV cameras and written email exchanges to prove that something was happening with other parties. Evidence of a person from their personal perspective is still evidence. It's their evidence as to what happened. So I felt like this was uh, worthy of discussion on this channel. And for some more further and personal thoughts about this, um, non-legal thoughts if you like, my personal thoughts as a lawyer, but my personal thoughts about it, join me on Black Belt Secrets and I'll perhaps share a few more thoughts about this then and how it may relate to other cases and other people going to court facing their own claims and what they will feel is potentially unjust from their perspective. So I hope you found that interesting. Please do remember to like this video and subscribe and hit the notification bell to receive further updates. Um, that does help me because it helps YouTube to recognize that other people might be interested in these videos. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.